the little red barn be with you. The little red barn be with you. With Nilsie. Hi, Nils Johnson, Little Red Barn Brewing Company. Today we're brewing our nut brown ale. But as we're thinking, being summertime, that the LRB should be thinking about a pilsner to go with the season. In that theme, I'm going to talk about some of the new standards in pilsners. Although I learned a valuable lesson, oh, I thought all pilsners were crap. The American style has lost the traditional pilsner, which it has a mild malt with a hoppy finish. So we're going to go through five different beers, talk about characteristics, and see where Americans went wrong. Miller Lite, the American standard in Pilsner. Fine Pilsner. Let's see how fine it really is. As you can tell, no head retention. Much like one of my first girlfriends. Tastes like bad water. Maybe water fil filtrated through a jock strap. No flavor, no malt, no hoppy characteristics. Does not meet the standards of a Pilsner. Scale 1 through 5, give this a 1. Sorry America, you lost on this one. In our quest to find the perfect Pilsner, we're going up north to Vermont, we're trying a Pilsner from uh, the shed. Let's see if they got that malt and hoppy balance. Beautiful golden color, nice head retention, nice bouquet. You have a nice malty start. The finish has this bouquet of hoppiness. It's a nice balance. It's much closer to the standard that we were talking about earlier. It actually has flavor, unlike the American style. On a scale of one through five, I give this Pilsner four. Great job, Vermont. Guess you know for more than just maple syrup. Our quest to find the perfect Pilsner has taken us west to uh, Goose Island. They're out of Chicago, Illinois. Let's see how their beer comes to meeting the standard of the malty flavor of the hot finish. You can see, again, you got that nice Pilsner color, nice head retention. <laughs> wow, that's hop just jumps off the palate right, right up my nose. Very nice malty flavor. The hop finish is a little bit overwhelming. It takes away from the, the balance. It's like, hello, I'm here, taste me. Although a very good example of a craft beer, it misses the mark for the classic Pilsner. So on that, on a scale of one through five, we'll give this three and a half. I would order another one. It's refreshing. Just a little bit too much hop for the Pilsner standard. Our quest for that perfect Pilsner takes us back to uh, Pennsylvania, or to Pennsylvania for the first time. Trobes Sunshine Pils. Let's see how they do with meeting the standard. Reading about it online, Rated in the top five in a lot of different lists. Good color, pretty good head retention, nice bouquet. The tastes are very subtle. You have a nice malt, it's in harmony with the hops, nothing's overpowering, although with that being said, nothing stands out either. It's a very good beer, but you know, it lacks some of that character. I'll give this one a 3 out of 5, although if you bought me a free one, I'll give it a 4 out of 5. We saved the Victory Pills as the last example of uh, the Pilsner. Joshua Bernstein in his book, The Complete Beer Course, has rated this the number one, not just Pilsner, his number one beer. Looking at it online, it's in the top three and 20 different top 10 lists for the Pilsner. Let's see what, they, what they're doing right and maybe the LRB could make it better. Let's see what we got. Beautiful color. You could float a penny on that head. Bouquet is a little bit sweet. I get the malt. See how it tastes. That's a real important thing. Oh my god, this is love. Great malty flavor. The aftertaste is a subtle hops. Everything I read about this style 
It's right here. This could be, if I could be so frank, a 12 ounce orgasm. I say run out to the store, buy this great summer brew, but I think in August, LRB may have won this a little bit better. Looking forward to sharing it with you. Thank you. All I want to do is brew.